Hi, boys and girls. We are getting close to the end. Look at that. <clears throat> I think there's 52 chapters and we're at 44. So we're getting there. <clears throat> um, so they had the garage sale. They didn't get as much money as they needed. So they got an eviction notice. Um, and Crenshaw is back in full force. Um, and... Uh, Jackson goes, why are you here? I need you gone. And uh, Crenshaw's like, I'm here to help. So we're going to find out what that means. Chapter 44. At four that afternoon, Marisol came to the door. She was wearing flip-flops and flowered pajamas. She had the um, the Goaches, Dosh Hounds, Frank and Beans. That's what the wiener dog's names are, Frank and Beans, with her. Did you forget? She asked. We were supposed to meet. I apologized and took Frank's leash. As we started down the sidewalk, I was surprised to see Crenshaw walking ahead of us. Not as surprised as I might have been a day or two ago, but still, there he was, gliding along on his hind legs, doing the occasional cartwheel or handstand. I didn't know how to tell Marisol why we were leaving. I'd never told her about our money problems, although she may have guessed by the way I didn't offer her anything to eat when she came over, or by the way my clothes were always a little too small. I wasn't lying, exactly. It was more that I left out certain facts and focused on others. I didn't want to do it, of course. I liked facts, and so did Marcel, but sometimes facts were just too hard to share. I decided to tell Marcel something about a sick relative about how we had to go take care of him and how it was all kind of, all of a sudden kind of thing. But just as I started to speak, Crenshaw leaned close, whispered in my ear, the truth, Jackson. I squeezed my eyes shut and counted to 10 slowly. 10 seconds seemed like the right amount of time for me to stop being crazy. I opened my eyes. Marcel was smiling at me, and then I told her everything. I told her about how I worried I'd be, how worried I'd be, and how hungry we were sometimes, and how afraid I was about what might come next. We walked towards the school playground. Crenshaw strolled in ahead of us and rocketed down the tube slide. When he got to the bottom, he looked at me and nodded approvingly, and then. I don't know why. I told Marcel one more fact. I told her about Crenshaw. I forgot. I waited for her to tell me I was nuts. Look! Marcel knelt down to scratch beans behind the ear. We don't know everything. I don't know why my brothers feel the need to burp, burp the alphabet. I don't know why I like to build things. I don't know why there are no rainbow M&Ms. Why do you have to understand everything, Jackson? I like not knowing everything. It makes things more interesting. Science is about facts. Life is about facts. Crenshaw is not a fact, I shrugged. If you understand how something happens, then you can make it happen again or not happen. You want Crenshaw to go away? Yes, I said loudly. Then more softly, no, I guess not. She smiled. I wish I could see him. White, black, hairy, I said, extremely tall. What is he doing right now? One-handed push-ups. You're kidding me. I'd love to see that, said Marcel. I groaned. Look, it's okay. Go ahead and call me, call a psychiatrist. Have me committed. Marcel punched me in the shoulder hard. Ow, I said, hey, you're annoying me, she said. Look, if I were worried about you, I'd tell you so. I'm your friend, but I don't think you're crazy. I think it's normal to have a giant, or I'm sorry, you think it's normal to have a giant kitty taking bubble baths in your house? Marisol puckered her lips like she was chewing a lemon. Remember in second grade when that magician came to the school fair? He was so lame. Remember how you went behind the stage and figured out how he was making the rabbit appear? And then you told everybody? I grinned. I figured it out. 
But you took the magic away, Jackson. I liked thinking that the gray bunny appeared in a man's hat. I liked believing in the magic. But it wasn't. He had a hole in the hat and Marcel covered her ears. I didn't care, she cried, punching me again. And I still don't care. How? I said. Again? Jackson, Marcel said. Just enjoy the magic while you can, okay? I didn't answer. We walked in silence following our usual route, past the little park with the fountain, past the bike path I'd ridden a zillion times back when I had a bike, past the place where I had broke my arm popping a wheelie, past the sign that said, Welcome to Swansville, Swans Lake Village. I read that swans stay together for life, Marcel said. Usually, I said, but not always. You and I will be friends for life, Marcel said. She stated it like any nature fact, like she just said the grass is green. I don't even know where my family is going. Doesn't matter. You can send me postcards. You can email me from the library. You'll find a way. I kicked at the stone. I'm glad I told you about Crenshaw. I said, thank you for not laughing. I kicked at a stone. I'm glad I told you about, oh, thanks for not laughing. I can practically see him. And then Marcel said, Marcel, he's doing backflips on my front lawn. Actually, he's doing the splits on your driveway. I said, practically see him. She smiled at me. Fun fact, Jackson, you can see a sound waves, but you can hear music. Chapter 46. That evening, Crenshaw and I went out to the backyard. Crenshaw liked night. He liked the way the stars took their time showing up. He liked the way that the grass let go of the sun's warmth. He liked the way crickets changed the music. But mostly, he liked to eat the crickets. We lay there, me on my back, Crenshaw on his side, with a wreath of nearby gnawing on a tennis ball. Every so often, she looked up, ears cocked, sniffing the air. Felt it good, talking the night as the night took over. It almost made me forget that we were leaving the next day. It almost made me stop feeling the anger and sadness weighing me down like invisible anchors. Crenshaw tap, trapped a cricket under his big paw. I told him crickets were considered lucky in China. Crickets are considered delicious in Thailand, he replied. His tail looped and snaked like a lasso at a rodeo. And in Catland, I chewed on a piece of grass. It's a good way to distract yourself when you're hungry. How do you know that? Crenshaw glanced at me. I know everything you know. That's how imaginary friends operate. Do you know things I don't know? Well, I know what it's like to be an imaginary friend. Crenshaw slapped him at a moth with his front paw. The moth fluttered over his head like it was laughing at him. I hate moths, he said. They're butterfly post imposters. I don't know what that means, but a butterfly wannabe is. If you know everything I know, how come you know words that I don't know? It's been three years, Jackson. A cat can do a lot of learning in that time. I read the dictionary four times last month. I tried for a moth. He tried for a moth again and missed. You used to be faster, I pointed out. I used to be smaller, Crenshaw licked his paw. I've been meaning to ask you why you're so much bigger. You weren't this big when I was seven. You need a bigger friend now, said Crenshaw. My mom walked by with a box of clothes to put in the minivan. Jackson, you okay, she said. Yep. I thought I heard you talking to somebody. I cast a look at Crenshaw. Just talking to myself. You know, my mom smiled. An excellent conversation partner. Do you need any help, Mom? Nope. Not much to pack when you get right down to it. Thanks, sweetie. Crenshaw lifted his paw. The cricket scrambled for freedom. Down went the paw. Not enough to kill the poor bug. Just enough to annoy him. Do you ever feel guilty about the way cats torture things? Bugs, mice, flies. I said, I know it's instinct and all, but still. Of course not. It's what we do. It's hunting practice. Survival of the fittest. 
He lifted his paw, and this time the cricket made a quick getaway. Life isn't always fair, Jackson. Yeah, I said, sighing. I know. In any case, you're the one who made me a cat. I don't remember deciding that. You just sort of happened. Aretha dropped her ball in front of Crenshaw. He sniffed it disdainfully, meaning like, ugh, how, why would I play with that? Cats do not play, Crenshaw told her. We do not frolic. We do not gamble. We nap. We kill. We eat. Aretha wagged wildly, still hopeful. Fine. Crenshaw blew on the tennis ball. It rolled a few inches. Aretha nabbed it with her teeth and tossed it in the air. That was playful of you, I said. I plucked a new piece of grass to chew on. For someone who doesn't play... I fear you may have made me with a hint of dog thrown in. Crenshaw shuddered at the thought. Sometimes I actually want to, to roll in something stinky. A dead skunk, maybe? Or some ripe trash? Dogs do that because I know why. Because they're idiots. I also know you will never, ever catch this fine feline, feline specimen stooping to that low. I sat up. The moon was thin and yellow. Anything else I put in the mix? Well, I sometimes worry I have a bit of fish in me. I rather like the water. I thought back to my first grade self. I liked fish a lot when I was seven. I had a goldfish named George. Of course, said Frenchia. You look a lot. You liked a lot of animals back then. Rats, manatees, cheetahs, you name it, he groaned. That's too. No wonder I like to eat mosquitoes. Sorry, I said. I couldn't help but smile. At last, you worked with animals, or at least you worked with animals. I have a friend, nice guy, who had made it entirely of ice cream. Hated hot weather. Wait, I let that sink in. You mean you know other imaginary friends? Of course. Cats are solitary, but we're not completely antisocial, he yawned. I've met Marcel's imaginary friend, Whoops, and your dad's. My dad? An imaginary friend? I cried. It's more common than you think, Jackson. Crenshaw yawned again. I feel a snooze coming on. Wait, I said, before you go to sleep, just tell me about my dad's friend. Crenshaw closes his eyes. He plays the guitar, I think. My dad? No, his friend. Plays the trombone, too, if I recall correctly. He's a dog, scrawny. Not much to look at. What's his name? Starts with an F. Unusual name. Franco, Fiji. Crenshaw snapped his fingers, which is not something cats normally do. Finian, he said. It's Finian. Nice guy for a dog. Finian, I repeated. Hmm. Where are you, Crenshaw, when you're not with me? You've seen Teacher's Lounge, right? I've peeked. We're not allowed in. Mostly, I saw a lot of cups of coffee and Mr. Diasfano's napping on the couch. Picture a giant Teacher's Lounge. Lots of people waiting and snoozing and telling stories about ex exasperating, amazing children. That's where I stay. That's where I wait, just in case you need me. That's all you do? That's plenty. Imaginary friends are like books. We're created, we're enjoyed, we're dog-eared and creased, and then we're tucked away until we're needed again. Crenshaw rolled onto his back and closed his eyes. A good cat fact to know is that they, are only, ex they only expose their tummies when they feel safe. His purr filled the air like a lawnmower. Yeah, 47. I couldn't fall asleep that night. Sounds echoed off the walls of our empty apartment. Shadows loomed and shrank. A question kept nagging at me. Why did things have to be this way? Life isn't always fair. Crenshaw had said his words reminded me of an interesting nature fact Mrs. Malone had taught us last year in fourth grade. Bats, she said, actually share food with each other. She was talking about vampire bats, the ones that slice open sleeping mammals in the dark of night. They don't actually suck blood. It's more like they lap it up, which is awesome enough. 
But the really amazing part, the no way part, is that when they get back to their caves, they share with the unlucky bats who hadn't found anything to eat. They actually puke up warm blood into the hungry bat's mouth. Ooh, I'm going to do that. That's just disgusting. Oh, man. If that's not the coolest nature fact ever, I don't know what is. Mrs. Malone said maybe bats are altruists which means they're sharing to help the other bats, even if it's a risk. She said sometimes, she says some sci scientists say yes, some say no. Scientists love to disagree about things. Miss Malone looked at me then, because even though it was only like the third week of school, she already had me pegged pretty well. Jackson, she said, maybe you'll get to be one to settle the great are bats nice guys debates? I said probably not because I wanted to be a cheetah or manatee or dog scientist, but I would keep bats in mind as a backup plan. Mrs. Malone said something else about bats that day. She said she sometimes wondered if maybe bats are better human beings than human beings are. Hmm, something to keep in mind. Are we great human beings by helping others? We don't know. Bye, everyone.